Hi, and welcome to another Korchik's class video in global politics, where we dissect and review some of the major ideas in the global politics world today. In this video, we are going to be looking at the different levels of analysis that we use when we look at political issues and the different impact they have, whether we look globally on a big scale or locally on a smaller scale. In global politics, the different levels of analysis we use range from the global to the international, regional, national, local, and community impact. For each one of these levels of analysis, we look at not only the impact of the political issue on that particular level, but also the actions that these different levels might take depending on their perspectives, worldviews, and place in the global politics landscape. In this video, what we are going to do is look at the political issue of climate change and how we would look at climate change from these different levels of analysis in global politics. So when we think about the global level, climate change is seen through this aspect of global warming, where every year the global temperature is rising by a certain amount over time on average. We might look at the impact that has on sea levels, but we might also look at the global impact of certain players on the global politics landscape, like Greta Thunberg, for example, who in the last little while has gained quite a bit of a following regarding her advocacy for climate change and trying to get people more aware of climate change issues all over the world and therefore try to pressure their governments to try and adopt policies that are going to be more friendly to the planet moving forward. On the international level of analysis, we typically look at ways that states come together in order to try and affect a political issue. So in the case of climate change, we might look at some examples of when states have internationally come together to try and formulate a goal or a series of policies that these states would enact in order to try and reduce the effects of climate change. So for example, in the 1990s, many countries got together to form the Kyoto Protocol and set targets of carbon emissions that they would try to reach in trying to lower their effect on climate change. More recently, in 2015, countries got together for that same purpose in Paris. And we had the Paris Climate Summit where the international community got together to try and positively affect climate change. On the regional level, we might look at ways that climate change is having a disproportionate effect on certain regions that might include several states. In the case of climate change, one such region is the Arctic. And so countries that have a stake in the Arctic have gotten together to form what's called the Arctic Council. And these Arctic Council meetings, um, states such as the United States, Canada, Denmark, Norway, Russia, right? These states that have some stake in the Arctic get together and try and formulate policies that are going to slow down the effects of climate change in the Arctic, as well as looking at the way that climate change has been affecting uh, the indigenous communities of the Arctic as well. On the national level, we might look at how different states have approached climate change for their particular country. So, for example, the use of carbon taxes has been an increasingly popular way that states have tried to have some sort of effect on reducing carbon emissions. When you have a carbon tax, people might try to think of more climate-friendly ways to go about their daily lives and for corporations to have more climate-friendly policies in place as part of their practice. 
And each country might have a different way of approaching that. In terms of the local level, we look at ways that certain areas within countries, some smaller areas, are maybe being disproportionately affected by climate change, but also how local areas might be taking action on it. One example is New Delhi. New Delhi is one of the most polluted cities in the world and so contributes to climate change and basically also the health of people living in New Delhi is impacted by the pollution in that city. So one of the approaches New Delhi has taken and they've piloted this program a few times was to reduce the number of cars on the road. They decided that for a period of time on odd numbered days, only cars with license plates that end in odd numbers would be allowed on the road. And on even numbered days, only cars with license plates that ended in an even number were allowed on the road with the intent that you would cut cars on the road by half, thereby reducing the contribution of automobiles to pollution. Right? So that's an example of a local effort in order to try and curb some of the pollution that contributes to climate change. Community, the final level of analysis that we look at, is a little bit more nebulous. And we can think about a community sort of similar to the way we would think of a local area. So, for example, when we think about climate change, because in Canada, the Inuit live in the Arctic. They are being disproportionately affected by climate change. And when sea ice starts to melt, it has an effect on the traditional way of life on the Inuit. So it affects that community that way. Other indigenous groups in different parts of the world, in the United States, for example, have banded together to protest what they see as for example, the oil and gas industry having this negative effect on climate change, but also oil and gas pipelines, for example, being built on traditional indigenous land that indigenous people believe that they should have more sovereignty over. So protests have erupted around that, uniting different indigenous communities together as part of this common cause. But community could also have a more broader meaning. And when we think about climate change, there are certain ways that it has affected the scientific community and the debate in the scientific community. And that, for example, can certainly cross boundaries and cross borders. So community is definitely a, a nebulous way of looking at some of these political issues that might change from each issue that you might look at. So that is how we analyze issues in global politics, where we think about how they might differently impact different groups of people at these different levels of analysis, but also how those different groups and states or NGOs or any other actors in global politics, how they might try and act for that political issue based on the level of analysis that we're looking at. And that helps us more wholly, more completely understand the impact of these political issues, but also the potential actions that might be taken to act on those political issues. Thank you for watching and we will see you again next time.